Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Welcome to the 2 March 2015 Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting, a very special evening. Chief Sawyer, please, oath of office for the newly appointed Police Sergeant Andrew Jowett. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'd like to thank you again for allowing us some time into your important business, but uh, I think this is important business also for the townspeople to see the progress the department's making, uh, particularly in the area of promotions and hiring. So with that, uh, prior to the ceremony, I'm going to ask everyone, if you would, make sure your devices are silenced. And at the conclusion of the event, I would ask that, I know a lot of people want to congratulate Andy, take pictures. We're only going to take a few photos down here with the family and command staff. I'd ask everybody else, if you would, exit upstairs into the lobby. We're going to open the doors up there, and we'll have a small reception up there. After that, uh, the Hampton Police Association is inviting everybody to the galley hatch, the Pelican Room upstairs, for a reception afterwards. You can have a few beverages and uh, you know, tell lies about Andy, and I'm sure we'll all appreciate that. Okay? With that, uh, Officer John, I'd ask you to take your place over there. From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to Andrew P. Jowett of East Hampstead, New Hampshire in the county of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of police sergeant in said town and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you the said Andrew P. Jowett as police sergeant of said town. And upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead, given under my hand, this second day of March 2015, Fred Welch, Town Manager. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Andrew P. Jowett, I, Andrew P. Jowett, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will faithfully and impartially, that I will faithfully and impartially, discharge and perform, discharge and perform, all the duties incumbent on me, all the duties incumbent upon me, as police sergeant, as police sergeant, according to the best of my abilities, according to the best of my abilities, agreeably to the rules and regulations, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. thank the chief and the deputy for giving me this opportunity. I'm very grateful. I got to thank my family for being very supportive, particularly the last three months during this whole studying process, which is kind of out of my element a little bit. Um, um, I think Dave Hobbs said it good. We were here a few months ago. This department has always had a great quality of uh, leadership, setting the example for us to follow. So those are, those are the people I'm going to be following. People have come and gone that I had a tremendous amount of respect for, and a lot of them in the room tonight, which I really appreciate. Fire guys, ex-fire chief here, people have been extremely influential in my career here as a police officer. This department right now is an uh, outstanding core of uh, offices, as well as a uh, unique blend of uh, new, new generation officers I'm looking forward to work with. And I can't thank you enough for everybody coming out tonight. I really appreciate it. And uh, no place else will you see a better working relationship between fire, public works guys, and the police department. 
on behalf of Town of Hampshire, uh, Hampton, Hampshire. So thank you very much for coming. Everyone, thank you again for attending. And that concludes our ceremony. If you'd like to say hi to the graduate and pictures upstairs, we're going to open the door. We'll take your way into the uh, foyer up there. We'll be right up. Congratulations. Hey, thank you very much. Good job, Sarge. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You go. Absolutely. <laughs> Sit down, Rusty. Where you going, Hatch? Yeah. They were going to beat it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. Bye, Steve. They make it easy for me. <laughs> they make it easy. Good foundation. Thank you. Gary.
sitting you on the ground too. Yeah, that's annoying. Careful. Okay. Okay. Good. Whew. So is Uda coming in for comments? I or? guess. I don't. You want me to check? Somebody, Jim, you want to get up and check, see if she's coming in. Somebody. She's just said she would, yeah, someone must have just asked her a question. I'll go get her. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't know what got her upset. I don't think we did anything. Get no. upset. If she wants to speak about her radical uh -oh. problem. The precinct is taking up the, her articles down there, like probably now. Oh. Me? Yeah. No, you're okay. Good evening. In public yeah. comment, Uda, please. Thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Uda Penio, 15 Tattle Ave. I know we had a lot of snow. I know they did a good job everywhere in this town except my street. Every day I watch the trucks and the front loaders taking out snow and dumping it in the, in the town parking lot and in the state park. Yes, uh, Friday they were on Mooring Drive, they were on Bragg Ave. About 2.30 in the afternoon comes, they come, go by my street, they go down Fellows Ave, Harris Ave, and they are all done. So it's not so much for me, but two houses down from me is a young lady. She had surgery, lots of complications. Visiting nurse comes in every day. And household help comes in every day. She has two small, well, one baby and a, and a toddler. There is no room to park. If, she, if the visiting nurse parks out in the street, nobody else can go by. And I was wondering if somebody can go down and clean it out. Please, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. What street, Uller? Toddle Ave. Thank you. Further public comment this evening? Seeing none. Announcements in community calendar. Selectman Waddell. Uh, nothing. Selectman Wolsey? Um, yes. I had a couple just bear with me here for a second. The, uh, we, we didn't have time last week with the public hearing, but I just wanted to bring the pu to the public's attention that we had a very nice letter from a from residents of Hampton, um, it, the gentleman said that he's 77, his wife is 75, and his son is uh, disabled. And because the son needs special equipment, uh, the generator a generator was installed in case of a power loss, but they were unable to uncover the generator because it got buried in snow. Um, the fire department uh, happened to call and check uh, on uh, this family. And uh, the uh, three firefighters uh, went uh, over to this property and, and dug out the generator for this uh, family. And the uh, father says, I would like to take this opportunity to tell you about this experience and pass on our sincere thanks for their help. We have a wonderful fire department that keeps track of folks like us, and we feel blessed to live in the town of Hampton. Please let the town of Hampton know what happened to us today and again pass on our sincere thanks to our wonderful fire department. So I thought that was very, very kind of, of that family. And of course we are proud of our department. And there's a message also from uh, Assessor Tinker uh, dated February, 5th, February 12th. And he says that as of today we have added approximately $44 million in new value and new construction, and in addition with the pilot payment from Next Era, we're looking at close to $60 million in added valuation to date for 2015. This equates to about 2% of added taxable value. So I think that is uh, uh, outstanding, and hopefully this, some of this new building will, will help us tremendously. And we did receive our franchise fee payment. I think the manager is going to refer to that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Sir. Nothing tonight. Thank you. I have two things here. One was left on the desk for me. It's the Hampton Area Alliance Club is having their winter auction Saturday, March 7th at the Ashworth by the Sea. Uh, doors open at 6 p.m. They have a lot of uh, stuff they're auctioning there. 
for the yeah. Lions Club Winter Auction. The other thing I have is, is uh, I was going over the, some stuff on the Internet the other day, and I found a, a, a website. It's called inthenohampton.org. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a very good website. It has a lot of factual information about our Warren articles. Uh, it's not a pro-con. Um, it's, it's not somebody with their own slighted version of it. Um, but it is just uh, it's a good place to go. So if, if, if you want to learn and get educated about what our Warren articles are and hear both pro and con, yep. go to inthenohampton.org. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Chris Munns uh, emailed folks on the board today, and I'll, I'll read that, unless you were going to do that, Mr. Welch, right? Uh, it's for an event on uh, a Seacoast Community Substance Abuse Forum, and if you uh, allow me to read without glasses, the forum will be hosted uh, by Kathy Terry, and uh, moderator will be Doug Griffin. It's the Seacoast Community Substance Abuse Forum in the C Seabrook Community Center, 311 Lafayette Road in Seabrook, on Saturday, March 7, 2015. 1,100 hours to 1,500 hours. Mm -hmm. Join us for a free buffet lunch. And there is a list of uh, uh, panelists and representatives from the governor's office, from uh, state corrections, from uh, uh, important people in the uh, uh, substance abuse uh, profession. So again, uh, the 7th, 11 to uh, 1,500 Seabrook Community Center, uh, important stuff. I wanted to uh, go over. Uh, the Hampton Wastewater Treatment Plant, they were recognized recently for uh, excellence. Am I stepping on your traffic, nope. Mr. Welch? Uh, Mike Duby uh, is recognized uh, and his, uh, his operation down there uh, for the uh, 2014 Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant Excellence Award. Uh, very, very tight parameters, very important uh, facility. There was testimony in Concord uh, this morning with Senator Stiles uh, to a committee. And this was particularly noted, how important this operation is that Mike uh, leads uh, under Mr. Welch and uh, Public Works to the state and uh, just how flawless that is. Additionally, uh, DES, uh, Commissioner Burak, consistently puts out uh, the no deficiency reports from Mike Doobie. So um, he is doing a fabulous job down there. That's all I have, Mr. Welch. I forgot to mention. Yeah, go ahead. Grab it. We'll let them, yeah, the, and also the town reports are out, available at the town office. A few of them. A few of them. Thank you. Roman 3 is the consent agenda. There are 25 veterans tax credits requalifications. Number 2 is appointment of three representatives to the Rockingham Planning Commission for three-year terms to expire in oh. 2017 is recommended by the Planning Board. Barbara Kravitz, Francis McMahon, and Mark Olson. Motion, please. I make a motion. So moved. Second. Waddell Bridal. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 4 is questions of concern regarding intergovernment cooperation between the town and the state. If I can give a no, thank you. I'll, I'll go sans glasses, Esquire. Um, regarding the town and the state, there was uh, an issue a couple of weeks ago ongoing. Uh, Rainy Cushing, our state rep, uh, Jim Waddell, uh, a bunch of folks were really on board to repeal the uh, pollution control exemption. Hearings uh, didn't go well. Uh, Commissioner Rose, uh, unbeknownst and without consultation to either the town manager uh, or uh, Rainy Cushing, uh, in our efforts, uh, spoke against that uh, measure, uh, did not uh, provide a courtesy uh, to this town. Uh, simply went in, had his deputy show up at the hearing, uh, and said that uh, the deputy said that he would be a placeholder. Commissioner Rose uh, supports keeping that tax dodge. Uh, the local paper, the uh, Portsmouth Seacoast Online, calls it New Hampshire's shameful vote in favor of corporate welfare. Yeah. And it's difficult to see how Mr. Rose comes to his point of view. It not only cost the town of Hampton $1.2 million but it costs the state millions of dollars in education fund. So that's where we're going. We don't get much cooperation from them. Uh, it's always a bitter slog up at the state house uh, expressing Hampton's interest. We do a lot for the state. There was testimony to that this morning up in Concord uh, with Senator Stiles. And so we wanted to lead off with that as the backdrop. That's why it's on the agenda. Selectman Waddell. Yeah, I, I just, you know, it's, it's a really tough situation. And, and the, the relationship between the state and the town is, is, is a, 
always a tough issue. And I think that, that we have to do is really work diligently with our state reps, because we do have state reps that support us and a state senator that really supports us. Yeah. And I mean, the best way to get things done up there, and we didn't get it done this time, I realize that, is you know to work with the chairman and to work with the committees and work with and you know and keep that relationship going. You know, I, I think sometimes maybe the the reaction is well, we'll fight against them then, but I don't think that's going to help us. I think it's really a, a you know getting up there and, and, and really <coughs> working uh, with our reps, with our state senator, and trying to get something done. So I just you know I, I'm as, as disappointed as anybody else. I, I think. I think they missed the, the point that was being made, that it, that it is corporate welfare, that they could reform the tax base as itself and not give these exemptions that aren't exemptions, but I, I just caution the, the way we deal with it. Slick Mary Louise. Well, I think that the this, this representatives and senators in the legislature are supposed to be making the laws. I have a problem with state employees who are hired hands sticking the noses in. It's bad enough trying to get cooperation from legislators in other divisions, but when you have department heads who really, I think, should be staying out of it and let the legislators work it out on their own. I'm, I'm really disgusted with, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about Concord uh, as we get down to, on the agenda. I'm tired of the messes up, up there, and I'm tired of uh, state <coughs> legislators from other communities who won't really look into the matter and try to, to make a fair decision. But to have that gentleman stick his nose in and, and – uh, sandbag uh, a serious effort is infuriating. So, <clears throat> so <clears throat> are we just complaining about this one issue <laughs> with the state? Complain about is that more. what this is about? Yeah. There's, there's, there, it, it's, it's, uh, it's an ongoing problem. It's systemic in, in my opinion. Yes. And again this morning, uh, it's on the Meals and Rooms tax sharing and uh, that didn't go very well. Senator Stiles worked so hard and she's so yeah. diligent and she doesn't get the support. And I, I quite frankly don't see the situation improving. Yeah. Well, and neither do I. And I think it's kind of crazy. I think we have to have a different way of looking at it to keep going up against it. People, what was the vote? Was it 24 to 1 it's like it usually is? 15 to 1? Yeah, okay. That's the way it always is. So that's not going to change. And we would be idiots to think that it was going to change. It's not. And I think there's other, we're going to have to think of a different way to make some success with the state. Because number one, I think the condition of Ocean Boulevard is a shame. It is absolutely awful. Everyone that lives on Ocean Boulevard pays a ton of money to the town of Hampton, and they're not getting any benefits from it. Uh, it's awful the way it is there. And, you know, I just, I can't say enough bad things about the condition of Ocean Boulevard. They have, they don't uh, plow the turnarounds. I mean, I've been in business 50 years. I've never seen it this way, and I live on Ocean Boulevard. Never have I seen anything to the condition of what's happening there now. Um, it, it's just amazing. Every one of my customers that comes in, because where the legal turnaround is, it has not been plowed out. The illegal one is plowed out, and I think someone from Boris Head plowed it out so that they can get on Ocean Boulevard. Um, but so all of my clients have to break the law or go down a whole nother street. And I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of the sidewalk issue. I'm sick of the drainage draining onto my property. It's worse than anything I ever see come here of what's happening to my property. I see a lot of people that have bad issues that come, but they're nothing of what's happened, like what's happening on Ocean Boulevard. And for someone that's lived there for 50 years and to see it deteriorate to this condition, it's, it's shameful. So I, for one, think something has to be done with the state and the town of Hampton maintaining something that's normal for the people that live there. Mr. Bridal, having spent 10 years in the 
New Hampshire legislature, I know how hard it is to get anything done in that place. Uh, like, like Jim has also spent some time up there. It, it, it's very hard, and if it's hard for our reps to get any ground work done, uh, especially when it when it when it's for this area. And I, quite frankly, don't know how to handle that. I don't know how what we should do to 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 get them to recognize it, to get them to look at it. Um, I don't know if going after the memorandum of understanding is the way to do that or not. I just don't know. Um, but we have to get back in touch with our reps. Maybe we ha maybe we ha ask them <coughs> to have a meeting down here. To hear from their constituents, um, maybe that's how how we address it, so that they can hear. It, so that it's not just coming from us, and we're not just punching back and forth. Um, but I think we need to help them out in in any way we can. They being our reps and our senator. Yeah, just I just want to make sure that. I agree with Mary Louise and I agree with Rick. I mean, I wasn't saying that <clears throat> the state's doing a good job at all, and, and, but I agree with Rusty too. We have to figure out a way to get it done, and we haven't got it done for a long time. And, and the state's at fault, and, but so a meeting with our reps and our, our state senator and constituents and talking about the very specific problems that we have in Hampton, and I, I know it's been talked about before and it's been done before, but let, let's figure a, a way to get this done. I think that's the important part. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Quick follow-up? Yes, ma'am. You know, I have sat here, uh, not just on this board, but as a resident watching what's going on, and almost every time, and Phil has been very vocal about us with all the expenses and so forth and how we've been shortchanged as a community, and he's right, but... I asked for sit-downs with the state representatives on the joint operations plan, and what I heard was, oh, we want to be polite, we don't want to be confrontational, we don't want to be mean. I'm very willing to be mean, and I'm very willing to get these hired hands down here and get off their hind ends and sit here and listen to the public because I think that's the only way we're going to get anything done. And if they haven't got the guts to come down here and look us in the face, they ought to all be fired. Thank you. And, and yes, sir. Hey, I have one other thing to mention. This is something I, I meant to mention it before, and I don't think I mentioned it last week. But <clears throat> when the, the day that when they closed Ocean Boulevard, uh, right to where I have my business, and there's a little white house beside me, and the woman there, her husband died this year. She's 80 years old. And they, uh, when they were having a problem with that snow coming across the marsh, they just kept going and digging it out there and for some reason backing up and depositing it in her front yard. Well, they didn't just deposit a little bit. They de deposited much more than that lady in Boston that's having it trucked out of her yard. And the woman because she was afraid and didn't know what to do. She called me up at 5.30 in the morning. I had to get up and get dressed and go and tell the man because he wasn't there just for a few minutes. <coughs> he was there for about 45 minutes just doing it over and over and over again with a backhoe. And <clears throat> we already had tw twice d uh, shoveled off her deck. And when they pushed that in, because the house is close to the road, it's been that way since 1930-something, they pushed all that snow onto her deck, and it's probably um, ha is going to have to be replaced. And I filmed the whole thing. So, you know, I just couldn't believe it that that would happen to that woman, 80 years old, that's trying to just live. It, it, it's shameful. So I just feel I had to say that. Well, thank you. And, and uh, in testimony this morning uh, in support of uh, Senator Stiles' uh, bill, uh, for meals and room sharing, uh, it was it was brought out again to the committee. Uh, the New Hampshire liquor stores that we police, that we provide first responder uh, uh, assets to, uh, the state's gross revenues exceed $60 million within Hampton. Uh, the tolls, again, uh, and just for reiteration, are over $60 million annually. That's gross. 
uh, the, par, the meals and uh, uh, rooms tax in this town, uh, a conservative estimate would be $25 million. We get back five or $600,000, which is peanuts. Uh, the state parks, um, uh, I don't know how well they're run by a, a government entity that uh, pursues yeah. profit, but I, I think it could be done better. Uh, those numbers right there are close to $150 million of gross revenues to the state. Uh, those employees that work there have pensions, they have health care. Uh, it's, it's a very robust uh, platform that they enjoy and the employees enjoy. Uh, that's money that doesn't get spent in Hampton. That's money that doesn't get invested in Hampton. We get no return for infrastructure. What that $150 million does not include is business enterprise tax, business profits tax, does not include real estate transfer taxes. Uh, and I would say that within 03842, you're pushing $200 million of juice money that gets siphoned directly up to Concord. And uh, the 15 to 1 vote, the uh, commission arose uh, uh, in a very insulting way, in a lack of communication, very unprofessional. And I, I would say that to him right here, uh, to, to sandbag us, as Selectman Wolsey says, uh, it is atrocious. And uh, there seems to be a very uphill battle for meals and room sharing. I think that's ridiculous. Um, and again, $200 million. Uh, we can't get uh, a satisfactory appearance at the beach. That looks like a third world country. It'd be insulting to call it a third world country the way those parking lots are maintained. That type of revenue should be amortized over 12 months and those parking lots down there should be cleaned out. That's state property. It's $200 million. They can afford to do that. And it's lo and behold, we have to request to move snow and put it on state property. And I agree with Rick that um, going through normal legislative channels is not working. On the 12th of February, I sent an email to Mr. Welch, and it's requesting a review. And we've talked about this before. If I can find it now. And it says, Mr. Welch, and uh, Mr. Welch is staffing this. Uh, Please provide uh, department head input on what platforms we are currently performing government services on state of New Hampshire property to include highways, state offices, state buildings, state roads, state parks. Department head input on state of New Hampshire utilization of town of Hampton facilities to include sewer, transportation, town park, and state agency utilization of our police assets, our fire assets, and buildings, etc. We're requesting a brief from our legal counsel on amending the JOP. Uh, to providing state access to Town of Hampton platforms, given our razor thin budget, dread opposition to HB 224, which was the pollution control exemption, and this current weather cat condition, this catastrophic weather condition. The pollution control, which was voted against us, 15 to 1, cost us $1.2 million. Uh, so if we can get that brief uh, from the attorney about terminating the state of New Hampshire access to the aforementioned service and property utilization by the state of New Hampshire. And this isn't to quantify the cost of these. We know this is, as testimony went today, data developed by Mike Swolcher. This is about $1.7 million a year, and that's conservative. Testimony today indicated that we have now currently come under compliance with GASPI, depreciating our assets in an Arctic condition. Our frame structures, our, our vehicle assets depreciate extraordinarily fast in this environment. That's at least a $200,000 a year tab as well. So this is to pray for a discussion by leadership to terminate these costly services. And I say the time has come where we don't provide services for free to any entity when we get treated with such disrespect and just ignorance and, and a total lack of any, any listening to how much we contribute to the state. And our, our, our revenues that are produced here to the state at very little cost is 2 or 3% of their budget. And, and you would swear that they're doing us a favor. So, Mr. Welch, if you can prepare that information. I will. There'll be an election uh, coming up here a couple of weeks from now. There'll be a different Ten. different person sitting here, but I would, I would like to move forward with some of that staffing so we can take a look at that. But clearly, uh, this has been three years under my watch and in, in standing the mid-watch, and the legislative pursuit of things uh, is not going our way, and we're here to represent the taxpayers of New Hampshire. I've been taxpayers of Hampton, and I think that's a good start. And do you have any comments before we move on? Well, I would tell you that uh, we've tried to work with the state in a number of issues, and I know Rick is familiar with some of those. 
We tried to solve some of the drainage problems on Route 1A uh, because they were catastrophic. They were causing severe problems to private property. They're causing severe problems to town property. Um, we thought we had it resolved, believe it or not. And uh, we had the Army Corps of Engineers on board. We had uh, State uh, DES on board. And uh, we thought we had State DOT on board, except they never showed up to do the work. And they never, never, never pulled the permits, which are on their property. Otherwise, we could have had all these drainage problems resolved. No, they pulled permits. They, the permits are due to expire this year, at least the one, that I, the one that's close to where I'm at. There, was, they, there were they permits didn't, pulled. They didn't pull the construction permits. They pulled oh. the, the wetlands permits. And, and um, they haven't maintained the infrastructure for 30 or 40 years. It's falling apart or has fallen apart. Because it was never like this. Right. And, and they just simply do not cooperate with us. Now, we mentioned a minute ago the, uh, the need to um, rebuild Route 1A, bring it back up to some standard so mm -hmm. it represents something in the town. I mean, the town invested $20 million on the beach. So the state could invest $17 million or $16.5 million for their facilities down there. They're talking about uh, redoing Route 1A. Um, the problem is that they're going to give us all the water and no pla we have no place to put it. Uh, we've asked them for, when they do this, that uh, they give us enough infrastructure outlets to take care of the water they're going to deposit within our drain systems. And the answer was, no, we're not going to do that. You're frozen. You can't take any more water and deposit it at different locations in the marsh or the river, period. We're not going to give you any more permits. So, but yet they want to give us all the water on Route 1A that comes from the ocean and from rain and melting snow and so on and so forth. We don't have the capacity to do it. It's a matter of, you're right, we need to talk to them, they need to talk to us, but so far it's been a one-way conversation from us to them and nothing coming back. So we need to do something logical to break this stalemate so the state will do something that's appropriate to take care of the problems that we have in town caused by the state. It doesn't, it's not much to ask. They have an $11.5 billion budget. We got a $27 million budget. There's a, there's a slight disparity here. And the federal government is, has, has on a number of occasions through our insistence said they would work with the town and that they would give the state the permits to do the work. But the state hasn't gone for the permits. So I think we we're, we keep on running around the mulberry bush. The trench is so deep now, we're about to start speaking Chinese. Um, so we need to get something done, I agree, and maybe what we need to do is we need to get some of these department heads in here, along with our state reps and our senator, and talk turkey instead of beating around the bush on this thing. Okay, thank you. And, and we'll go around for one more round of alibis. And uh, there was that request. You do have that email. If we can staff that yep. for the next meeting, that would be great. Mr. Waddell, <coughs> comments? Just, just to get our state reps, get our departments, and I agree with that. 100% on that, uh, get constituents here, get somebody from the state here, and, and go with it. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yes, the joint operations plan, which expires March 31st or <coughs> April 1st next year, which I refuse to sign, gentlemen, and you may remember that I asked that we demand that they show their faces down here, and instead a couple of representatives of the board went and talked to them, we got that little we got that little agreement. They've been dumping on us for years that mess of, quote, beach rakings that they dumped in our public works department was a disgrace and a disaster. We had the problem with the lobster traps, and we still continue to allow them. I asked about forcing them to take their own waste and get rid of it. Oh, well, they don't have enough property. Well, baloney. They're using us. We are having tremendous wear and tear on the infrastructure at the transfer station because of all the crap they're bringing in there. Seven cents a pound my foot. We've let them walk all over us. And if I recall the discussion a little bit last year that we didn't want to be rude or confrontational. We wanted to be polite. This is where polite gets you. And I will say to Phil's credit, he's been yelling about this since he came on the board. But this is where it gets you. This is where it being nice gets you. And I want to see their hind ends down here in public on TV discussing 
Hampton. And by the by, I don't. I think we're the only community on the seacoast that responds to the state highway to I-95 for accidents and incidents. I believe Hampton Falls and Northampton and some of the other communities have the state police responding, don't they? I think they do. I've had people comment on that to me. We have bent over backward and all we're getting is kicked in the whatever. Thank you. Kind borders. Thank you, ma'am. So I've had it. Sir, last, last. Thank you. I think we still need to work with them. I think uh, it's a good idea that we have them come down here. Uh, Town manager is going to try to arrange that again. I mean, we can. We have a 30-day notice on that on that JOP or whatever. It can be revoked. That can be revoked. So let's let's right. give some time for the town manager to see if he can do that. And we, and we see don't want to see if he can do it, Rusty. We want to demand. Well, I, I would I would just say this, and we'll wrap it up. And everyone's point is well taken. We Thank brought you for this up. This on. This and, is good. And uh, Mr. Welch, would you forward that email to all the board members? We'll put that on the agenda for nine March, uh, and be prepared to uh, bring motions to the table uh, regarding mm -hmm. uh, our provision of services for free yeah. to the state, uh, in terminating those or adjusting those. And you can put in your letter that I will be delighted to meet with them. <laughs> <laughs> Roman 5 is review of town budget and departmental warrant articles. I'm going to take the easy one first, and that is uh, um, there were 39 warrant articles that the Board of Selectmen in the town of Hampton participated in a decision on. 97% uh, of our vote was unanimous. Out of the 39 warrants, there were three nay votes, and there were two abstentions. So 39 times 5 is 200 give or take, so we were very close to perfection and unanimity on the Warren articles. I wanted to say that. I don't think that needs much uh, more vociferous uh, explanation and enthusiastic support about how the board feels. And Mr. Welch, if you could give a, a review of uh, the town manager's budget uh, and the budget as it transpired and where it is today, this cat storm, and uh, how tight things are. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Well, the budget as approved by the deliberative session is uh, $27.1 million. That represents an increase to the town. Uh, we know that, but that increase is necessary. Uh, I just point to the last couple of weeks where we have a budget for $160,000 for snow and ice removal and treatment, and uh, we're pretty close to a $300,000 bill, and we haven't even added up what the police and fire departments have incurred by these storms. Um, that's a significant change to our budget. And unless something happens between now and, and the end of the year, uh, we're going to have some really severe problems. The problem we've gotten, I think it's been said a dozen times, is that we keep on kicking the can down the road. Uh -huh. And we can't do that. We just can't do it. We have too many problems to allow that to occur. The selectman's budget, or should I say the deliberative session's budget, uh, restores the selectman's budget that the selectman had asked for. It is a tight belt budget. I don't want to kid anybody. There's a lot of stuff that was removed from it. I removed several million dollars from it before it ever got to the Board of Selectmen. And the selectman removed several million more. Um, I think the department heads know very well what's going on in town. We haven't maintained our infrastructure for quite a number of years, and it's falling apart. We wouldn't be spending um, four and a half million dollars for new pumping station. We wouldn't be spending um, one, and I just signed this the other day, 1.2 million plus uh, to fix things at the wastewater treatment plant that should have been fixed 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we just keep on going on and on and on and on. This budget needs to be approved. And if for no other reason, just take a look out your window and see what's outside. Uh, we have a lot of material that we have to move. We have a lot of snow that we've moved. We have a lot of roads we're going to have to maintain. Uh, and there is a warrant article on roads. Hopefully that passes. We can start fixing them, um, and, and as well as Exeter Road. But there's a 200,000-plus warrant article in there for other roads. We need to look at what our needs are before we end up with more $5 million repair projects that we can't fund. There's a limit to how much the taxpayers can fund. If the maintenance had been done, and I'm going to pick on Exeter Road, had been done mm -hmm. when it was called for, we'd be talking about doing an overlay treatment of Exeter Road, as a, which is going to cost 
three or four hundred thousand dollars as opposed to four five and a half million dollars to fix it. That's because we deferred the maintenance on it. We have several other roads in town that are worse than Exeter Road. And several that are on their way to being as bad as Exeter Road. And none of them are short, none of them are inexpensive to repair. We need to start doing things the right way. This budget will help us get there from here. Thank you. Select Modell, comments on the budget. Yeah, um, I agree with, with the town manager, and I agree with the, the fact that you cannot, and, and two weeks ago in the, in the Sunday, Seacoast Sunday, I think they had a big article on, on statewide and nationalwide deferring maintenance on their infrastructure. And what happens is then down the road, the bill just keeps getting larger and larger and larger, and you're going to pay it. We're all going to pay it at some point. And I think it's really important that with this budget that it's the taxpayers who, who benefit and the taxpayers who pay for it. And I think that they take a close look at it and close look at what is in the budget, what's being paid for in the budget, what needs to be done. Just drive an exit a road, you know it needs to be done. Just drive through the middle of town when you're talking about the drainage and High Street, right, the big hole that developed in front of uh, Hagen's Grill there. Yeah. I mean, there's just infrastructure, there's work that needs to be done. The town is growing. We are expanding. We are adding to our tax base. And I think, I think it, it's up to the taxpayers. They have to look at that budget, make a decision. <laughs> and I think what uh, Rusty had uh, mentioned earlier that in the No Hampton has a great mm -hmm. yeah. description. Mm -hmm. not, not how you should vote, not a sure, pro yeah. or con, just a good yeah. description on, on the budget and what the budget carries and, and, and is, uh, yeah. is for. So I, I, I just urge people to look at the budget, make a decision. It's their town. All right, where do we want our town to go? You know, do we want to keep putting things off and paying for it later, or do we want to settle down right now and take care of it? Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson? And in addition to raising an annual budget, we have to always be cognizant of revenues, revenues, revenues. It took forever. I can remember Fred suggesting the sewer buy-in charge, and nothing was done about that uh, until last year. Um, Impact fees, impact fees. The, I just read you the message from the assessing officer, Mr. Tinker, uh, on adding $60 million to the tax base. And the planning board has consistently only set impact fees for the schools. They have refused to set municipal impact fees. $60 million in building added to our base with no impact fees at all. And then, of course, the chairman has discussed the shortfalls <clears throat> from the state. I have that paper with me that Jim just referred to, and uh, a couple of things caught my eye. Sunday, February 22nd, 2015, the Seacoast Sunday. Uh, first big article here says delayed maintenance costs New Hampshire millions. Big ticket items cause delays in fixing secondary roads. New Hampshire currently rates 1,600 miles of road, more than a third of the mileage, as being in poor condition. New Hampshire lists 147 state bridges and 350 municipal bridges on its red list. That's rough. But uh, the other one that caught my eye, and Fred and I go back to the planning board in December of 2012 on this one, says city grapples with its aging buildings. It's talking about Portsmouth, but it says new sewer plant looms over capital improvements. I've been warning about that on the Budget Committee for years, and I still say that is the gorilla in the closet, and Fred's estimate three years ago was 60 to 100 million. You're talking about 5 million for the Exeter Road? That's peanuts. 60 to 100 million dollars just for that sewer treatment plant if we can't keep it going, and thank God Mike Doobie has been doing a great job. We are in trouble, and we've got to get off the dime and, and pass the budget and start doing some serious planning and making sure that the projects get done. Thank you, ma'am. Sir? Well, <clears throat> I think it's as simple as we all know that anyone that's a homeowner knows that you have to put money into your home mm -hmm. every year, or before you know it, you're going to be holding the short end of the stick. Yep. It's as simple as that. So here we are again. and. 
I noticed that the um, yellow sheet came out today and trashed the budget. But so I think it's something that people need to be informed about. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. yes I hope people will will go to that <clears throat> that website in the know hampton.org and take a look at it be an educated and informed voter you know we we've yes we did build a couple new fire stations in, in the past year they also had the sewer treatment plant or the the lift station down on church street that did but that that lift station had to be done because it was in threat of collapsing and failing the problem is we have a lot of other infrastructure in this town that's in that very same shape. And so it's up to the voters. It's up to the voters whether they decide whether they want to invest in their town, invest in their property, because quite frankly, the town of Hampton is their property. Or do we want to let it go further? I don't think the voters do. I think they, they understand. They've seen the, the weather we've had. You know, there was... <clears throat> Excuse me. There was conversation back a couple months ago of how the gas prices were going down. <laughs> well, it's at 244 today yeah. as a national average, yeah. so it hasn't gone down from where it was. Our gas prices and fuel prices are back up, and so we need to have the budget pass. It is a very lean budget, but it addresses some of the problems that we've had for a long time that have not been addressed, and they need to be. So I would encourage everybody to, to look at the budget, get all the information. Don't just go from one off-color sheet that you might get in the mail that's put out by unknown people because they won't tell you who it is. But get information and find out the, both the pros and the cons and make up your own mind. And I'm sure when you do, you're going to look at it and want to give the town its money that they need to get the work done. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. Final comments uh, from uh, this seat in, on page 13 of the uh, town governmental reporting, report of the Board of Selectmen, and the speaking about this board, importantly, financial and infrastructure challenges have been identified. Courses of action recommended by the elected leadership have been offered to the voters and citizens of Hampton. It is the voter and the citizen that are in the end, the collective chief, chief executive and ultimate masters of the destiny in the town of Hampton. So the budget soon becomes the voters, and we'll see what transpires. Roman 6, return to uh, recess public hearings, February 23rd, Lot B, Stowcroft, continuation should need arise. Mr. Welch, Town Esquire. I believe this. Sure. You want to talk about this one? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, board, <laughs> the board last week conducted a two-hour public hearing. All sides had a chance to speak, not just council, but uh, the public at, in general. Uh, as the board has heard, there are a number of complex legal issues involved here. And also there's another factor of the board's needing to take a view of the premises, which is rather difficult at this time. Uh, but um, on Thursday last, uh, as uh, the chairman had suggested to the various council, there are a number of issues that we would like further briefing on in writing. And so on Thursday of last week, I wrote a letter to them uh, in closing a multi-page opinion of Attorney Peter Laughlin that the board obtained in connection with this hearing and asking them for comment on this. Uh, given the number of issues and their complexity, uh, we've asked that these briefings be filed with the Board of Selectmen's Office by noon on Friday, March 20th and uh, if they wish to reply in any way to each other's submissions, uh, we've asked that they do so via written submissions to the Board of Selectmen's Office by noon on Wednesday, April 1, 2015, with the idea that the Board would again take up what was recessed by way of a public hearing after receiving those briefings, and hopefully we'll get some weather where the Board can actually see the condition of what's being talked about uh, without having to uh, get bucket loaders to do so. And so I would recommend that the board uh, continue its recessing of the public hearing until receipt of these briefings and until the weather clears. Thank you. And so uh, the status quo is we are still at recess. 
If the board wishes, yes. That's Thank you. My Does that require a motion, or is it just stand in recess? Uh, I would suggest you just sit, simply stand in recess. Thank you. Any questions for Council Selectman Waddell? No. I'm not a question, a Councillor, but I have had a lot of people, because we had technical problems last Monday, and I've had a lot of people asking me when the meeting will be run so that the public can see the whole meeting. And I checked with our staff uh, earlier when I came in, and they said that I guess starting tomorrow they'll have the ability to run that particular meeting of the board. So I just want the public to know, watch Channel 22, and, and you will catch up with it. Thank you, ma'am. Sir? But I'll sit. Okay, thank you. Esquire, thank, thank you. Thank you. Roman 7, Town Manager's Report. Sir. Mr. Chairman, um, I'm pleased to report that the town has received from the Health Trust a refund of $360,423.17 for medical and dental refunds that will be distributed to the general fund as revenue to our retired and our current employees who are enrolled in health and dental coverages. Distribution will be made as soon as the Finance Department has completed calculating and verifying the various distributions by groups. Obviously, each group has a, a proportion that goes to them. The SRF loan agreement has been completed for the new sludge handling equipment at the wastewater treatment plant. The loan, including interest, is for $1,661,642.37. And runs through 2034. I signed it and sent it back uh, earlier last week. Snow removal and handling continues. Um, we should have final figures for all costs, including public works, contractors, police and fire departments. Uh, once operations have been completed, but they are still ongoing at, at a much slower rate than they were before. We are still uh, awaiting information on whether or not funds will be recoverable under the state or federal disaster aid programs. That decision, I understand, has not been officially made as of yet, but is in the, is, it is in the, in the queue to be made. I want to remind people that uh, the town election and ballot voting on warrant articles is on Tuesday, March 10th, 2015, at the Winnet High School cafeteria from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we do have some town reports available upstairs. Um, they've been delayed. We do have it on, online. We, we, we've complied with the statute. We only need one copy to comply with the statute, but, and we've had a copy available for over a week if people want to come in and read it. Um, we've, we've sent out uh, over 1,000 uh, electronic copies uh, to various people in the community. They're on Facebook. They've been delivered to 957 people's Facebook accounts and 505 email accounts. Um, the town reports uh, uh, Several of them, several cases were delivered today, and, and obviously they're here uh, for people to, to review. Uh, the balance should be uh, in our hands by Thursday or Friday. Okay. There is a problem with trucking, yeah. uh, and we're one of ten towns that's having the problem getting these reports in yeah. because of all the snowstorms that have taken place recently. And uh, just one, I think one final thing. I noticed that there was quite a, uh, um, a concern over the fact that we don't have a fire apparatus capital reserve fund. Uh, and I just wanted to remind everybody that town meeting abolished that fund last year mm -hmm. uh, at the request of several boards and committees. So we had one, but we no longer have one. So if there's a real need, and I suspect there probably is with fire equipment getting up in the 750 to $1 million category per piece, uh, that we should start saving a small amount every year in order to pay these rather than having appropriate up 750000 or a million dollars for a piece of equipment all at once. So we might want to think about that in the near future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Questions for the town manager? Mr. Waddell. Uh, I'm set, I believe. Yeah. Thank you. Selectman Wilson. The uh, SRF loan agreement, Fred, the item two. Yes, ma'am. Now, is this another case where we're not going to get our SRF funding? That we, we're getting the loan, but then when we've completed the project, are we going to be stuck again My the state? My understanding from the state is that Hampton is one of the few towns that oh. is included within total, dis, uh, total uh, appropriation for the SIRF funding that they, we are owed. 
Because they still owe us. They do, and, and this, these run on for 20 years. Yes. Uh, they're going to be paying us. They have the governor said that any submitted, uh, other than this one here, which was submitted earlier mm -hmm. and guaranteed by the state, uh, any of the others that have been new uh, will not probably be funded this, this, this biennium, but the ones that they have been funding will continue to be funded, and we're one of those. I mean, we've got stuff in there that's been completed that they owe us money for, and we're not. Oh, yeah. And we're not seeing it, which yep. is another well, thorn we, in our side. We, we did receive money last year and the year before. Um, the year before was not a total payment, but last year was a total payment of everything that was owed during the year. So hopefully that continues. Thank you. Sir. No, thank you. Thank you. All set, thank you. All set. Yeah, Mr. Welch, I, I've Sir. got one question. Is um, uh, Mr. Mackinson from uh, the Mackinson and Company has sent us uh, via electronic, uh, the MS-9 and MS-10. Mm -hmm. It's the investment policy. It's also a, uh, a report of the trust and capital reserve funds. We now have very close to $20 million in the piggy bank. Mm -hmm. uh, that does not include our undesignated fund balance. Uh, could we put that on the agenda for next week and invite Certainly. Mr. Mackinson to come in? And uh, my way of thinking is if we look at uh, um, how tight our funding is, uh, the federal government is uh, printed four trillion dollars of paper and I'm concerned about uh, um, how well they've done with this 19 million but if we were ever to lose a substantial portion of that I'm old enough to remember Black Monday in the 80s uh, where 30 25 30 40 percent is wiped out and that would be the cost of an exit road so um, if we could put that on have somebody from the Mackinson company um, Mr. Silbert or whoever and if the board could prepare questions on um, how perhaps we could uh, better utilize those funds and uh, uh, reduce some of that systemic risk that uh, maybe some of us old timers think may be lurking out there. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, moving on, Roman 8, old business. <laughs> Mr. Waddell. No. Ms. Wilson. Ah, have we responded yet to the um, request from the police unions to? Uh, negotiate I thought if we could just respond to the letter obviously nothing will happen until after the election but have we uh, just just as a courtesy we have not I, uh, it's up to the board to direct me what they wish to do with the, uh, with the collective bargaining it's yeah. out of my control so since we, we wish received, me to respond and say thank you yeah, for, we'll since we received the letter a couple of weeks ago I just think it yeah. would be polite to uh, respond and, and then get back to them be happy After to do the that. Election. Yeah. Wishes me to. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Um, meeting with the planning board. Do we have any? We did promise them that we would hold a meeting, not a Monday night meeting, so that we could discuss the lighting and the drainage and holly good stuff that the planning board is tackling. And I think it would be nice for us to sit down with them, but we'll need to pick a, an evening and get an invitation out. I, I don't want to stall on that too long. Yeah, it was my understanding that that, uh, that would not be open to the public, that it would be a specific uh, well, it should um, with be. council. Is that correct, Esquire? Oh. Please. Can that, that, that not be held in public? Well, I would just say this, if I can grab okay. the floor for a second. We would discuss this issue. Um, uh, if you have two boards meeting, uh, it, uh, um, I, I don't see much good coming out. This is my personal opinion. Happy to meet with the board. A very limited agenda. The planning board yeah. uh, makes its own decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a sovereign board. It has its own chair. We have a liaison. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want to meet okay, unless so they don't. it's in public. Okay. So, well, I agree with you. Okay. And it's um, a right to know issue with Rick as well, I think. Right, so it, it it seems more complex, and I I don't I, I personally don't see um, um, any efficacy or um, benefit to, to meeting and hashing of grievances between two boards. It's not a matter of grievances; it's clarifying the position of this board related to expenses that we can potentially incur by action of the planning board. Is that not? Well, if, if, if the chill? board if the board has a preference, if there's a motion, we'll, we'll entertain a motion, and if motion carries, we'll do it. But uh, like the planning board has just said that they don't want to meet. Is that correct, sir? No, unless it's they, in public. In, unless it's in public, okay. that was my understanding. Because mm -hmm. I've had, uh, yeah, uh, communication. It's up to the board. Back to you, Esquire. It's up to the boards okay. to do it either way you like. Uh, the uh, planning board had asked for a uh, outside attorney questions that were phrased in a certain way that. Uh, mm -hmm seem to have a, a slant to it. 
What does that mean? It already sounds complex. <laughs> An outside attorney? Life is complex, Mr. Chairman. Correct. The, the planning board asked the outside attorney whether or not the uh, manager could override their regulations. That was a, that was a, uh, a controversial way of phrasing it, a, co a confrontational way of phrasing it. Yes. I mean, if that's going to be the, the point of the meeting to, to uh, try to bash Fred on the subject, I don't think that's a very productive use of time. I agree with you, Esquire. And, and moving on from this, if there's a motion to meet in public, um, I, I don't support it, but uh, uh, parliamentary procedure, if there's a motion, uh, somebody make it, please. Well, I will so move that we invite the planning board to a public work session regarding the, uh, the need for uh, their an understanding on certain certain aspects of plans that might impact uh, involuntarily impact uh, town spending. Is there a second? I'm going to second it just to have discussion. Yeah. And discussion. Mr. Waddell, discussion. Yeah, it, it, this is over the because Rick, you're, you're the uh, yeah. liaison, right? This is over the the street lights mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the drainage and the drainage. Well, fire and hydrants, actually. Hydrants, okay. And hydrants. Yeah. Well, I think the hydrant part of it's been clarified to their. Because you know, they're okay with that. Right. So I'm just, I'm just wondering, do we, if they're putting street lights in, do they have the right to, to, you know, eventually that question has to be answered, doesn't it? I mean, this board has to make a decision whether they have the right to make, and whether we have the right to refuse. Well, I think technically you do. RSA 3195E, mm -hmm. this is property being given to the town mm -hmm. uh, by a private individual who develops a property, okay? And the planning board's desire is that they have street lights on those streets that are, that are developed, <clears throat> and they have a right to ask for that. Actually, it's not in their regulations, but they have a right to, to ask for it. Um, underground utilities also is a issue. Underground yeah. is a big... The, there are there are a number of different issues here that that can obligate the town to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is my point. Um, if we continue to put up street lights, that's a board decision because I have to overspend the appropriation authorized by the town to pay for them. Yeah. Our budget's two hundred thousand dollars a year, and we're spending two hundred eighteen thousand, and the electric rates are going up. Yeah. Okay. Um, the bottom line is that I'm going to have to come to the selectmen and ask for authority to overspend a line item in the budget, or you're going to have to transfer funds to it from someplace. Can't keep on doing this indefinitely. Some, somewhere along the line, there has to be an agreement as to what's being done. My biggest objection has been two things. One, we're overspending the budget, and nobody's coming to the selectmen and asking permission to do that. Two. These are underground distribution systems that we're putting in subdivisions. That means that the cables for the street lighting are directly buried in the ground. They're not in conduit. They're directly buried in the ground. If they have to be replaced because they become defective, then we have to dig the whole street up and replace those things and then put the wires in conduit, which can cost a lot of money depending on how they're constructed. That could be, you know, I don't want to come to the board with a sudden shock of saying, I have street lights out on Barron Road, and I need fifty-five thousand dollars to fix them, <laughs> or they won't be on. Okay. That's 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 my concern, and and it's similar to what we uh, had an issue with on maintaining drainage systems in subdivisions. Mm -hmm. You remember that we had that changed by the planning board, so the town wasn't obligated to spend these thousands and thousands of dollars to maintain them, to fix them, and then have to sue the people to collect the money. That wasn't a very mm -hmm. viable situation for us because we didn't have the manpower or the equipment to do it. Mm -hmm. Same with street lighting. We don't have the manpower or equipment to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to hire an electrical contractor who specializes in street lighting maintenance in order to maintain. We can't even change the bulbs. We don't have the equipment to do that. So, and these lights will be ours. They're not the subdividers. Mm -hmm. They're ours. They're property of the town, and we'll have to maintain them. So. There are a number of issues financially that need to be resolved before we can go too far with this. Okay. And I think that they, the primary feeling that I get from it is that they, they think that this is a small pay, uh, piece for the town of Hampton to pay. 
that they figure with all those, for instance, the houses that are on this new road down here off Winnicott Road, are going to bring a large amount of money in, and they should at least have these things. And I try to explain to them, you know, that there things go on a lot different here at the Board of Selectmen, that we're looking at a much bigger picture, mm -hmm. but they don't agree. Ms. Wilson, we hopped over you, and I wanted to yeah, well, that's, okay. your motion, but... And in light of uh, Mr. Griffin's comment, the development may bring in more taxable property, but it also brings in more traffic, more people, more demand for services, all of this without impact fees, which the planning board asked for in 2002 and put on the warrant. I think the reason I would like to see this settled now is so there is a specific guideline. When plans are coming together at the planning board, which is their prerogative, they need to understand our position regarding unnecessary expenditures in these areas for the taxpayers. We're the ones who are stuck with making the decisions and paying the bills. So I think if they have clear guidance from here forward on what can be approved by them, then they might say at some point in the plans, uh, Mr. Jones, you have to go to the Board of Selectmen if you want this underground light system or whatever system they're proposing. I think it's, it's just a courtesy and since the Planning Board does not spend taxpayers' money on, on these utilities and so forth, I think it's just a courtesy and I think it will clarify and have the ground rules set so we don't have any more of these messes. Selectman Griffin. <clears throat> it's, you know, I don't really know. They have a, a exact, uh, they're directly in opposition from the way that their opinion and the way that Fred looks at it it's completely opposite. We're not so here for turf battles. Let's, let's, but, but let's let's just. So that's go. that's the issue. Yeah. Well. And there, tough. you know, we can extend. We could extend an offer, no matter you know whichever way. We already have, I believe. Um, you know, invited. We made. We made it clear. And I'm. Has the town um, planner sent any invitation or anything? Since the last meeting, he's he's wants to know what the selectman would like to do on behalf of the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's been given some leeway from them also. Yes, right. So, might I just say, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the outside council opinion that I referred to suggests that the planning board can require, through its subdivision regulations, street lights to be located if they wish just as fire hydrants are. But I would say to you that right now, the subdivision regulations do not require uh, fire hydrants. Okay, just, just as a point of order, and we have to get to Mr. Bridal, uh, there are specific matters of law. Right. There are specific empowerments to boards. There are specific empowerments of law mm -hmm. that authorize only selectmen, perhaps, as a layperson, to expend yeah. town funds. And I don't have any of those references. I have no legal synopsis of this issue. Lay persons from both boards can meet till the cows come home. And it's not going to advance the football. We're not going to score any touchdowns. Everyone's going to talk like we are now. And we're not going to solve any problems. I don't know what the election period holds in the next two weeks. I don't know if uh, Mr. Olson is running again. And he is the chair of that board. Is that correct? He announced yes, he's not a candidate. He's but he's, I, he, there's been some talk if he's going to be a writing candidate. So, uh, in terms of the, the, the points of law, the RSAs, the applicable uh, points on this issue, I, um, I, I have nothing in, a, in concrete, and we're just talking here. And uh, having said that, I reserve the rest of my comments for later. Well, I think we've got to get some dialogue going back mm -hmm. and forth. Uh, do we wait till after the boards regroup? Yeah, that's what I would suggest. I think that might be a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Give us a chance yeah. and give them. And then I, I think we probably need to have some sort of dialogue yeah. so that at least we know. 
So would you just withdraw that motion until uh, after the election? And then oh, I intended it, and I'm sorry if I didn't clarify that. After the election, when things settle down, invite the and new so, planning. So we're not, we're not um, uh, stretching that over elections, and we never know how they're going to work out. Um, can you just bring that up at uh, the meeting immediately following the election? Oh, all right. Okay. okay. I, I just don't want it to slip sense. through the cracks because no, it has been an issue. Yeah. Thank you. We and thank you for well. it. And just, just so I can close the loop, and you'll prepare uh, the RSAs and legal issues that yes. would be addressed and get those to the board. Thank you. And I'll bring it up to, at the board meeting mm -hmm. this week. Yeah. Thank you, Rick. What That's we good. intend to do. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Woolsey. Gracious. Okay. And we're continuing with, um, is it old business? That's what you're on. Okay. Selectman Wolsey, are you done with old business? Yes, sir. Okay. Selectman Griffin. Yes. Thank you. Selectman Bridal. I'm all set. <laughs> Thank you. You're done. <laughs> Roman 9, new business. Selectman Waddell. Set. Selectman Wolsey. Ah. Uh, I just <laughs> want to make you aware, because I am your representative at this point in time on the Conservation Commission. We did meet last Tuesday, and we uh, had a presentation for a, uh, with an ed a revised plan for a seawall revetment at 1030 Ocean yep. Boulevard. And that put me in mind of a problem that we're seeing here. You remember what happened with 1042, that the planning board approved the seawall revetment and then the contractor went ahead and built it whatever way he wanted to do it. And the big point of contention and, and that issue was the curved stairway and so forth. It basically didn't match the adjoining revetments. Um, the one that was proposed for 1030 the other night, and the planning board did uh, approve, I mean, the Conservation Commission did approve the project. But this is also a different design. And what I've suggested to the planning board, and I mentioned this to Fred the other day, I've suggested that the Conservation Commission and the planning board get together and see to it that plans are drafted for the seawall revetments so that when the planning board gets a request, they should be prepared to have a consistent design, for example, at North Beach. So, because these seawall revetments are all adjoining, they're all going together. And if the design on one is, is defective, it could conceivably wipe out that whole area if you have a bad enough storm. And there are other areas, and the Sun Valley and other areas in town where you have these or there may be built. And so I've suggested to the Conservation Commission that they approach the planning board and ask to try to have some consistent plans drawn up by area, because they're going to be different, different areas and different uh, properties that are adjacent to water are going to require something different. But if they can get a consistency, so and it should save the planning board some time and, and effort and conservation as well, and say, to, you know, if you are going to build a seawall revetment here in this particular geographic location, it has to be like this. So uh, I'm hoping, uh, you know, it was a suggestion, and I'm hoping that the Conservation Commission will follow through on that. But I wanted you to know that as well, because these revetments are being built on town property. And we are charging them 500 a year for a five-year lease for these things built on public property. But there's a, there's a potential for a lot of damage if some of these things aren't built either correctly or consistently. And I don't think we should have to listen to everybody hollering and fussing about somebody building a seawall wrong. So just so you know, uh, whoa, just so you know uh, what I suggested uh, to conservation. Thank you. By way of planning. Thank you, ma'am. That's it. Sir. Nothing. Thank you. Okay. Roman 10, closing comments? <clears throat> uh, I'm set. Select the Woolsey closing comments. We, when are we getting the letters on the joint operation plan out? Do we have an idea? I'm not trying to be mean to Fred. <laughs> as soon as we get some sanity restored, too. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to let that drop off the radar, right? No, no. no. I'm in fighting form, gentlemen. Eat your Wheaties, Miss Wilson. I'm ready. I don't need Wheaties. No, you don't. Thank you. <laughs> Closing comments. No, I uh, hope that I wish the Department of Public Works a lot of luck with the snow that's coming up on the middle yeah. of the week. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hmm?
Snow and rain. Snow and rain. Yeah. Th thank you. Well said, sir. Just again, remind everybody that the voting is next Tuesday. Right. At the Winnicunit Cafeteria. Yep. Hope to see everybody there. Thank you. A motion to adjourn at 2017. Oh, before, before you do we, that, we, we, ah. we've got unfinished business. Yes, sir. Might I suggest, Mr. Chairman, that the board uh, move to go into a non-public session under RSA 91A3, Roman 2, small c, matters which, if discussed in public, would likely adversely affect the reputation of any person, and small e, consideration or negotiation of pending claims or litigation, uh, these, this requiring a roll call vote. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Wolsey Bridal. The roll call is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, sir.